Podcast Network Asia. This episode may include topics, references, or discussions around sexual assault, domestic violence, stalking, physical violence, or subject matters that may be disturbing to some of our listeners. We do acknowledge that this content may be difficult. We also encourage you to care for your safety and well-being. Shocking, sad, revealing, and deeply researched. PH Murder Stories podcast covers the true account of infamous killings and true crime stories from the Philippines. There's no such thing as questions, just hidden answers. Stay tuned as we revisit the inconceivable crimes that exist. Some listeners may find the following content of PH Murder Stories highly disturbing due to its graphic nature. PH Murder Stories does not condone nor promote violence of all sorts. Viewer discretion is advised. Digital forensics was unheard of in the early 1990s. Its breakthrough has led to various crime-solving practices that most law enforcement agencies worldwide utilize nowadays. It makes us wonder How did it evolve in the first place? Well, in our first episode for today, you'll find out why. In 1991, the murder of Julie Snodgrass in the Philippines was a case that paved the way for the evolution of digital forensics across the globe. Agents from the Department of Defense Cybercrime Center, based in Maryland, USA, were the ones who helped solve the case and opened the gates for solving crimes through digital means. You are listening to the PH Murder Stories podcast, and this is the seventh episode for season three. As Snodgrass examined the discs, investigators were momentarily distracted, and he pulled out a pair of scissors and shredded them. Now they've wrestled the scissors away from him, but there are pieces of this disc on the floor. Now I'll tell you, a couple of things go through your mind at this point. The first thing is, how in the world did this man gets scissors into the inner room, and second of all, how did he get the disc and do this? Apparently, Snodgrass knew investigators had his floppy disks, and he came to the interrogation prepared. We knew that whatever was on that disc was absolutely, should I say, death to Joe. Investigators were desperate to repair not only the discs, but the damage to their reputations as well. So they collected the pieces and sent them to the U.S. military's brand new computer forensics laboratory. They said, you're not going to believe what happened. You know, we were interviewing this guy. He reaches into a box and he pulls out a diskette with a pair of pinky shirt and he starts cutting up this diskette. You know, and we're, we're, we, they're in the mail to you. And I'm like... Wow, okay, you know, I'm not a magician, I'm a computer crime investigator, what are we gonna do? To their dismay, they couldn't find a single instance of someone successfully reassembling a damaged floppy disk. We were calling everybody we could think of, and all our contacts, federal law enforcement, uh, we went to the private sector, you know, because maybe they had tools and techniques. So we, we pulled out all the stuff. One federal agency offered to try, but said it would take months, possibly a year, to figure out how to do it. It would cost close to $1 million, and there were no guarantees. After everybody gave up, we were driving around the Beltway after we picked up our diskettes from this one government agency who failed. Ed Cutchins, my deputy, said, you're going to give me a shot. You let all the other big boys have a shot. And I said, well, what are you going to do? He said, ah, I'm going to try and scotch tape them back together. I said, that's not going to work. On February 26, 1991, the lifeless body 
of a 33-year-old Julie Snodgrass was found inside her red pickup truck on a dirt road in Angeles City, Pampanga, near the U.S. Air Force Base where her husband, Military Sergeant Joe Snodgrass, used to serve. The victim was stabbed more than 40 times. Initially, the Air Force Office of Special Investigations thought that Julie Snodgrass's death was a politically motivated case. At the time, Several Americans had been killed in that location at the hands of the New People's Army, or NPA, the brute force of the Communist Party of the Philippines. However, the AFOSI's investigation eventually ruled out the NPA for the gruesome slaying of Julie Snodgrass and focused their attention on the victim's husband, Joe Snodgrass. The authorities found out that Joe Snodgrass was having an affair with their Filipina maid named Lucy. AFOSI interviewed the Filipina maid, who initially denied her involvement in Julie Snodgrass's killing. Later, AFOSI sought the help of the local Filipina police to interview the Filipina maid. After the interview with the local authorities, Lucy finally gave up and told the truth. According to Lucy, Joe Snodgrass asked for her help to kill Julie Snodgrass in exchange for a better life in the United States after his tour of duty in the Philippines ended. Lucy was pleased with the idea of leaving her impoverished life in the country and agreed to help Joe. Lucy asked her two uncles and another unidentified man to carry out the murder and paid them $150. As for Joe's part, he tricked his wife on the night of the murder into meeting an informant outside the U.S. Air Force Base, which meant three assailants would be waiting for her, alone and helpless, on the dirt road where the crime took place. This shocking turn of events led the authorities to look into Joe Snodgrass. In an interview with AFOSI, Joe Snodgrass denied his involvement and told the investigators that his maid was lying. He invited the authorities to their home and found life insurance policies hidden under a mattress. They also found shredded floppy disks on Joe's desk. Subsequently, the authorities discovered that the suspect had recently increased his wife's insurance policy from $200,000 to $400,000. Aside from the insurance policies they saw, The investigators also found two floppy disks on Joe's desk, which might contain evidence that could pin him to his wife's brutal murder. AFOSI thoroughly investigated the evidence found, particularly in the floppy disks, and discovered a letter written by Joe in which he asked his mistress to help him murder his wife, as well as paperwork relating to a significant change in his wife's insurance policy. Calling all aspiring podcasters. This is your sign to start your own podcast because we have just the right tool for you. Before we started podcasting, we really thought that everything would be such a hassle, especially the editing. But we found the best and most convenient all around podcast tool out there Pod Machine. Pod Machine will take care of all your podcasting needs from audio production, designs, and marketing growth. All you have to do is sit back, relax and keep creating great content that sounds professional. It's time for you to start sounding like a pro with Pod Machine today. Sign up and get a free episode trial. And once you're convinced of how good it can be and how it helped us, you can start for as low as only $49.99 for four episodes in a month. But wait, there's more. If you use our code PHMURDER, all caps, no spaces, you get one free episode credit upon subscribing. Just head on to podmachine.com and let them do the dirty work so you can do the fun stuff and sound like a pro. The authorities invited Joe for another interview to confirm whether he owned the floppy disks found inside his residence. 
Joe smuggled a pair of shears inside the room where he would be interviewed. The investigators were discussing with one another, and while no one was looking at the suspect, he quickly grabbed the floppy disks and cut them into bits and pieces in hopes of destroying the incriminating evidence that was found against him. At this point, a slam dunk case became one of the most embarrassing moments in criminal investigations. However, AFOSI did not give up. They thought of ways to recover the damaged floppy disks, which would turn out to be groundbreaking. In 1991, authorities and manufacturers did not have protocols to extract data from a severely damaged technology. AFOSI sought the help of Jim Christie, the Director of Operations at the Department of Defense Cybercrime Center based in Maryland, USA. He and his colleague, Ed Cutchins, tried their best to repair the floppy disks that Joe Snodgrass damaged. In a well-known true crime show, Forensic Files, Jim Christie said that his team applied heat from a soldering iron shielded within a metal tube to iron out the pieces of evidence without damaging them further. Then splice these critical sections into another disk to construct a complete circle that a disk drive could read. Unfortunately, the initial effort failed, and the head reader was damaged in the process. Unfazed, the team continued to work on fixing the floppy disks. Special Agent Cutchins was inspired by post-it notes and utilized a low-tax sort of scotch tape to keep the disc pieces in place under the disc without generating too much thickness. Astonishingly, the technique used by Jim Christie and his team worked. They were able to retrieve more than three quarters of the data on the destroyed disc. And the method they used was only worth $130. According to Dr. Deborah Kidwell from the Office of Special Investigations, quote, not only did these resourceful and determined agents solve the case, but they also developed a technique and opened possibilities that were not previously considered. These possibilities became standard operating procedure for the lab in the coming years. Unquote. As for the Julie Snodgrass case suspects, Lucy, the Filipina maid that helped Joe Snodgrass murder his wife, was only sentenced by a local court to a year in prison. Meanwhile, her two uncles that carried out the killing were also sentenced to a year in prison, while the third unidentified man was never found. The mastermind of the gruesome slaying and the victim's husband, Joe Snodgrass, was sentenced by the military court to life in prison with no parole. This was the first case where digital evidence was teamed with forensic science to solve a crime. And it paved the way for the dedicated cybercrime resources, mainly digital forensic investigations, that we see today. Thank you for listening to PH Murder Stories. If you like this episode, give us a 5-star rating on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You can also support our show on Patreon. Any amount you donate would benefit our team to keep doing what we love, which is to provide more true crime episodes for our listeners. Link in the description. For further updates from our show, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at PH Murder Stories and subscribe to our YouTube channel at PH Murder Stories. The views and opinions expressed by the podcast creators, hosts, and guests do not necessarily reflect the official policy and position of Podcast Network Asia, the hosts of the program or other programs of the network. 
Any content provided by the people on the podcast are of their own opinion and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything.